Morning, people. Another quick review of a new Ethan Grow knife. And I know the name is silly, but they're cranking out decent stuff. So I've got their other ones that you may have already seen. We've got their, uh, I think this is the EF225, but it's clearly a their interpretation, uh, their cover band version, if you will, of the SOCOM uh, Elite. So we've got that one already. We've got, uh, the second one I got was, uh, I think the 221. And this I think is their own design. I haven't seen, I've already done a review of this, so I'm not gonna go through it again, but I haven't seen um, a knife that would lead me to believe that this is somebody else's design. This uses the access lock that's now, you know, freely able to be used because the patent expired. So everyone's starting to use these locks. Um, very beefy knife, really nice pointy stabby blade, good slicer, very heavy duty, very thick for, for this style. But nice blade action. And then more recently, I had bought, uh, as part of my clones video, um, their copy of the Microtech DOC, which is a Microtech and, and Mick Strider uh, collaboration. And these guys made their version of it, and it's actually a really good knife. Um, and it's like $30, and it is just fantastic. The lockup, the, the materials, it's a really, really excellent clone. And then there's the other, the McStrider SHM or SMH or whatever. I always forget the name of the damn thing. Um, but there was another one. And this one I dinged on my review of the clones because um, I said the detent was too tight and I was having trouble opening it with a thumb stud. Well, it turns out that I'm just a moron. That's not a thumb stud. These are the blade stops. And so trying to open it by that, they're in the wrong position. They're too sharp. They're not made for that. If I had just used the thumb hole, like a spider co, I would have realized, oh, it opens just fine. And this knife has actually really impressed me. This one was $59, so it was a little more expensive, but still a far cry from the $580 that the Strider version is. But that is real carbon fiber. Um, it's really nice. Um, it's got over travel, stop on the, on the frame lock. It's a very good lockup. It's good blade centering. It's nice D2 steel. It's a really nice grind. I'm carrying this knife, I find, a lot. But anyway, I got a $500 gift certificate from work for uh, something that I won. So uh, I went and spent 450 of that card on getting the uh, Medford Praetorian, a legit one. Got the Scout model for 450 after I ordered it, of course, I got the email from Medford saying, hey, thanks for the order. The lead time is 9 to 12 months. I'm like, you got to be shitting me. I'm not going to be able to review that till next year. <sighs> Whatevs. Anyway, had a few bucks left. So I went and grabbed one of these off of the Amazons. So this is an Ethan Grow. Uh, let's see what it says. This is the model EF914. Um, it's a flipper design in blue, same D2 steel. So this, you know, despite how you feel about clones, um, this one is not, from what I can tell, it appears to be their, their own style. So um, I haven't seen anybody else. I mean, I'm st there's only so, much, so many shapes you can pack into a knife. So um, I've seen blades that are somewhat similar um, with that blade design. Um, there's a steel wheel piercer. There's some others, but you know, it, it, it appears to be their own design. So you've got um, G10 here that I guess has been layered and then milled out so that the blue layer shines, you know, kind of shows through on the black. It's got good texture, good grip, but not abrasive. So that's nice. We've got good jimping on the back. Um, let's see, what are the specs? So as I'm talking, let me see if I can pull those up because like I... Fool, I didn't think to do it ahead of time because everything is fly by the seat of my pants. My, my channel is completely run by ADD. So anyway, what do we got? We've got an overall length of, uh, let's see, 8.19 inches. The blade is 3.43. Blade thickness is 4 millimeters. And the weight is a little hefty, but not too bad at 5.86 ounces. Um, it is on ball bearing pivots. It is a flipper design, but you've also got the thumb stud. Now, I will say the thumb stud, without a flick, the thumb stud is not, I would say, in an optimal position. 
um, because when you flip it here, the, when you, you grip it a little differently, when you grip it, that flipper sometimes hits your finger there and slows it down. So to me, I'm always curious as to why they put both on there. It's like either design it to be a flipper or design it to be a thumb stud. You've also got the thumb hole, so people that want to reverse flick. I guess it's okay to have options, but you know, I would just buy the knife that I wanted and it has a lot, you know, the opening mechanism that, that you that you prefer. For me, after using this, the flipper seems to be the best uh, way to open it, but you know, you got your options. Really nice finger choil. Um, this is very deep. Again, it's that ergonomic, very organic kind of flow of the humped back here um, and then curls down into the blade. Very good for piercing and poking. Um, should make a wicked slicer. You got a very high grind, even though it's a fairly thick blade stock, very high grind. So the area behind the blade is thin. So it's a tall blade. Um, got a lot of belly. So that's gonna be a great, great slicer. Um, being able to, I, I like this shape here because that hump follows your hand. The jimping's right there. It's not aggressive, but it, it does give you the traction. You've got the finger choil. And then this sort of secondary, I mean, your hand really locks into that because it's not just locking in on one point. It's locking in on multiple points. You could really get in there and put a lot of pressure on that without having to worry about your hand kind of slipping up. That's a very deep, it doesn't curl back, so it doesn't cut back into your finger. The edges are nicely nicely beveled, so there's no sharp edges there. Sometimes that happens a lot when you get these, these the finger uh, flipper ends up becoming like a finger guard uh, in the on the other side. And a lot of times it's, they don't, they don't soften that. And sometimes it curls back and it sticks out and protrudes from the handle itself. And so it creates that hot spot where you've got that metal edge pushing on your knuckle, which isn't a lot of fun. They've done a good job here of blending that in so that it is pretty seamless. You don't have any kind of gap there. Um, and when it does hit your finger, it's actually kind of smooth. So, and then if your finger here just kind of locks in. And that also has been radiused on those edges, you can see it right there and right there. So again, nothing. there's nothing sharp there. It's all well-rounded, nothing's digging into your fingers. Doesn't create a hot spot. The uh, clip is a nice deep carry, so that's good. Um, is it reversible? No, there are no holes drilled. So this is tip up right hand only. So sorry lefties or fans of the other, you know, tip down. Um, I'm fine with either, although tip up, I tend to like because if for some reason that blade were ever to start opening, it's opening up away from my leg. It's pointing away from me as opposed to this where that tip is now pointing at my left ball. Or I'm sorry, my right ball. So not that that should happen, but I don't know, maybe I crash a motorcycle or something. And so it's bouncing around really hard in my pocket. I'm going to have enough problems on my hand without shish kebabbing a ball. So there's that. Let's uh, do a quick sharpness test. Did they put a nice fine edge on it? Yeah. Okay, get a little curly cue. Yeah. Very sharp, very clean. Cuts the whole edge and the uh, whole length of the blade. Push test. Not quite doing the push test. No. So the one I had the other day, oh, uh, that was the Kaiser. Just. You just barely touched it and did a push test and just... Psh. So this isn't doing the push test, but that is... That's a nice edge. That's a nice factory edge. I can, I can work with that. That's enough that I wouldn't feel the need to try to tune it up or tweak it. I'll just leave it alone until use dulls it and rolls the edge a little bit, and then I'll go in and get it back up. But very cool. I've uh, I've been very impressed with this company. The, I mean, a knife like this was twenty four. How much? I'll put a link in there if you want to buy it. Twenty four ninety nine. So again, you know, it, again, I know I keep harping on the Chinese knives, but I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I may know how they do it with really cheap labor, but still, I mean, they're using good materials, stainless steel liners. These edges all match up perfectly. That's the, you know, when you see knives, you say, oh, it looks kind of cool. But then when you get up close, you see, okay, they didn't chamfer all the edges. There's a lot of rough edges that kind of, they're going to rub on your pocket or they rub and grind against your finger. It makes them uncomfortable. Um, you'll see that some of these edges don't line up. Maybe the G10, um, the edge isn't uniform. The, the liners stick out a little bit more on one side than the other. 
you'll find those areas that are cut where there isn't that final attention to detail to make sure everything aligns properly. Everything's polished properly. All the edges are beveled properly. Things like that. Typically on cheap knives, if you bought a $25 Kershaw, typically it's going to look like that. If you bought a $30 or $40, well, $50 case knife, there's worse fit and finish. So for $25, to get a really kind of cool design, I know it looks oh, a little futuristic. I, when I see shapes like that, I, I think, oh, it's not going to be that comfortable. But honestly, it actually feels good in the hand. That is not a bad design. That does feel good. Your hand, it follows this part of your hand perfectly. And then your thumb curls right onto that part. So it, it's a cool design. I don't feel any hot spots. It's thick enough to be useful. It's not, you know, a Benchmade bug out where it's going to be, you know, a featherweight in your pocket at 5 and 8 ounces or whatever. And, and with decent thickness, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly stout blade. There's a good bit of steel. I mean, those are pretty thick steel liners in there. But the pro of that is there is no flex. There is no, I mean, nothing. There is no wiggle. The lockup is tight. Lockup's good. That edge, nicely beveled. Sometimes you get that sharp edge. And if you're one that sit there and flick and open, flick, and you know, open and close, open and close, that kind of rubs on your finger. They've milled out just slightly, just enough to get to that edge, but then it's angled nice and it's beveled, so there's no sharpness to it. Blade centering on this one is off just a tiny bit, but there is no rubbing. I'm not one of those people that, oh my God, the blade center has got to be perfect because aesthetically, you know, whatever. I think a lot of knife guys are just weenies about it and they just got to find something, you know. As long as it's not rubbing and it's not crazy off, that lock is pressing against the blade, the liner lock. And so sometimes it throws it off center a tiny bit. Now these other ones happen to be, you know, straightened pretty well, but I've, I've bought other knives more expensive knives that the blade centering wasn't dead on perfect. And then I buy a $25 knife and it looks like all these other ones are. So for whatever reason, this one is off 20%. As long as it's not rubbing and doesn't cause a problem, I don't really care. And nothing's touching. There's a definite, there's an app, there's a plenty of gap in there. So I think if I was to ding it for something so far, that's really the only thing. I can't ding it on materials. I can't ding it on the milling. The pocket clip is nice. Tension on it isn't crazy strong, which is fine. I like that, especially when you're dealing with G10. You don't want a super tight pocket clip that's going to force that G10 against the fabric. And after six months, you're starting to wear through the threads and kind of ruining your pants. So I like having the little bit lighter spring. But however you want to open it, you got your options. It's wicked sharp. That's a cool blade. That is the Evingro, what did I say it was, the 9, 4, EF914. These guys are cranking out some good stuff. If you don't like the clones, then don't get their SOCOM Bravo. If you don't like the clones, don't get their Microtech clone or their Strider clone. But they've got a bunch of, and I've looked in more of their knives. The, the, these, I think, are the extent of their clones. Um most of their knives are not. So this is their own design, apparently. And this one as well. So very cool. Good job, guys. I like this. I don't know if you, why you would have a reverse grip. I mean, I always just check it just to see if you did have to, you know, stab into something. But very comfortable. Again, follows the, conforms to the lines of your hand. Your thumb just kind of curls naturally right on that edge. That point doesn't push into you. It's definitely a cool design. Um... It would have been nice. All the ones they have are colored so that you can see, you know, the two-tone color. Honestly, I would be happier if it was just all one color. All blue, all OD green, all black. The two-tone makes it look a little plasticky, even though it's it's not. I mean, it's G10 and it's nicely, you know, milled out and stuff. But when I look at that aesthetically, I feel like that color combo, the, the kind of that bright blue even the green and stuff, to me, because you're not used to seeing G10 that way, right? So to me, it makes it look a little plasticky. It makes it look a little cheaper. It doesn't feel cheap. It's G10 over thick stainless steel liners. It, it's very well made and it's good materials. It's just an aesthetic thing. Color-wise, to me, it makes it look a little... That's about the only thing I could ding it for. Mechanically, it feels like a great knife. 
like I said, super strong. No wiggle, no wobble, no flex. Everything is really rock solid. So good job, guys. I give this one definitely a thumbs up. If you want to check it out, I'll throw a link down in the description.